Hello, welcome to Encore. Coming up, all eyes on the African art world. Vibrant and political, Paris hosts the Democratic Republic of Congo's first ever retrospective. And we take a look at the growing appetite for classical African art. As the market surges, it may be the last chance to get a masterpiece for a bargain price. Thanks for joining us. What's thought to be the first ever retrospective of art from the Democratic Republic of Congo is taking place here in Paris. Around 350 vibrant and political works that span 90 years are on show at the Fondation Cartier. Most of them have never been displayed internationally. Olivia Salazar-Winspear went along to have a look. We might be 6,000 kilometers north of Kinshasa, but Paris is showcasing the best of the Congolese capital in a new exhibition here at the Fondation Cartier. Beauté Congo takes in 90 years of artistic production from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Paintings, sculpture, photography and music. The work on show here is an account of the creativity that's come out of the country from 1926 to the present day. And part of that new guard, Steve Bandoma is here representing the contemporary generation. And from the title of this series of work, Cassius Clay, that's a reference to Congolese history there. That's a major theme in your work. What are the issues that interest you the most and how do they find their way into your work? Yeah, I work on Cassius Clay because it's fascinating me, you know, as the history of Africa. If we had the very important events in Africa, I think they were they are only they were only two. Like the first one was the Combat du Siècle with uh, George Foreman and Mohamed Ali, you know, in 74 uh, during Mobutu's rule, if I don't if I remember. And I was not yet born, you know, but for me it's a very important event that we, you know, we hosted in Congo. Is it still in the memory of the youth today? Because if you don't know about your history, your, how can you plan for the future? Today you work and live in the DRC, uh, where you've worked in the past as well, but you have travelled uh, to South Africa, to Paris and worked abroad. How did that experience inform your perspective when you went back to Kinshasa? Did you see the place differently? Yes, of course, you know, I'm actually a, a fruit of mixing culture, of exchange culture, cultural exchange, you know. I don't want to be an African artist. I'm an artist at all. That's the way I'm identifying myself, you know. If you can see my art, it doesn't really have much to do with Africanity. It's art at all because I'm a fruit of cultural exchange. So when I go back home, I see different perspective and I'm trying to balance, you know, and it, that's what I do. Artists featured in this show hail from various corners of the DRC, but many of them share the same fascination for its capital, Kinshasa. We can see the vibrancy of the 1950s and 60s and the nightlife and the sapeur, the society of ambience makers and elegant people. They're featured in the photographs of Jean Depara and Oscar member Freitas. The city's still a photogenic subject. Kirupi Katambo has turned his lens on Kinshasa to bring us a very different vision. Now, this series you have exhibited here, it's called Archegao. It shows the city of Kinshasa reflected, a kind of double vision, mirror image of the town. What does that tell us about Kinshasa? I was simply trying to capture the local people. The residents of Kinshasa was my lens, but I had to do it quickly, discreetly. Normally, they don't like to be photographed directly, so it was by trying to avoid their gaze that I turned to their reflections. The photos are reversed. They're a mirror image, and if you turn them around the right way, 
you see something that's almost ugly. But once they're back to front, it's almost like opening a window on another world, a surreal world. Painting a picture of a country that's undergone enormous change in 90 years is a considerable challenge. The exhibition's curators have had to make an edited selection that captures the spirit of the DRC. Leanne Sacramoni was involved in making that selection. Leanne, all of these pieces here, we see a lot of different media, different time periods, different styles. For you, is there a link or a characteristic that unites them? Well, I think there's a great diversity in the work presented here in terms of style and in terms of medium. But there is one thing I would say that can characterize um, all of the work presented here is that the artists take their inspiration from their surrounding world. Many of the artists are, are portraying um, different political events that you can see or political figures. Uh, for example, right here next to us, uh, we have a portrait of Lumbumba, who is um, a hero of Congolese independence, who unfortunately was assassinated in the 60s, next to Nelson Mandela and Barack Obama, so three great black leaders. And there, you see behind them, uh, the motif you see behind them are actually teeth uh, next to the con African continent. And that is because when Lumbumba was assassinated, they got rid of his body, uh, and the only thing that was kept were the teeth for identification. The artist is Sherry Samba, and we first exhibited his work in 2004 here at the Fondation Cartier. We gave him a solo show here. And he's probably one of the most well-known, um, internationally well-known, popular painters uh, in the Congo. And the popular painters were a group of painters. They actually call themselves the popu popular painters. They emerged in the 70s uh, when there was an exhibition at the Académie des Beaux-Arts in Kinshasa uh, in 1978. And they exhibited next to the artists of the Academy. And they sort of stole the show because of the, the content of their paintings. Uh, wasn't inspired by European tradition, but by their own urban environment, their own surroundings, politics, society. From popular art to digital creations, the 20th century has seen an effervescence of styles and subjects in Congolese art. And the work here on show at Bouté Congo suggests that there's even bigger and better things to come from the artists working there today. The exhibition is on until November at the Fondation Cartier. Now, there are more eyes than ever turned towards the African art world. Top museums and galleries around the world are expanding their art collections, and there's a rise in African art fairs in cities such as New York, London and Paris. Lauren Bertetcher reports now on the classical African art that's having its moment in the sun. Magnifying goggles to capture the works, every detail. This traditional Gabonese statue was used as an ornament on the tombs of village chiefs. Its size varied depending on the status of the deceased. It's a unique piece with a wooden base, fully covered with thin layers of leather. And for me, this is one of the most beautiful renderings of the human face in African art. Didier inherited his passion from his father, an art collector and researcher. He specializes in classical African art, an ancestral and spiritual craft from which the modern and contemporary schools draw much of their inspiration. At the age of 39, Didier is one of the few black art collectors in his field. His strength, a rigorous work ethic, passed down by his father. When I find a piece, I like to compare it to similar works that can sometimes be found in museums or large private collections. And the popularity of African art is surging. Last month, a cota by William Rubin sold for five and a half million euros at a Paris auction, an impressive figure and a new record for African art, but there is still a long way to go to catch up to today's market. In the field of contemporary art, a few million euros will usually only get you something modest. But for African art, the same amount can get you a masterpiece. The spread of African art to Europe began in the early 90s. 
Today, almost 9,000 pieces are displayed at the Quai Branly Museum in Paris. Well, the tribal masks and figures that inspired artists like Picasso remain the West's traditional view of African art. But as a new exhibition shows, there's much more to creations from the continent. It's called Africa, the Crossroads of the World. It's on at the Angoulême Museum, which is one of the most important collections of African art in France. And it's on until January. We'll leave you with that. Remember our website. We're also on Twitter and Facebook. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.